Alright, so in order to get started with Subsplash, you're going to go to subsplash.com forward slash login. Now they have two distinct sides of the application. You, to manage the church overall in the app, the website, the live stream, all that's under the app dashboard. Now if you want to manage the financial aspect of your church, that's under a different login here under the giving dashboard. Now we're going to go to login to this particular app, app dashboard. And we'll show you around here. Notice how it's dashboard.subsplash forward slash no, hyphen D and then you get to the welcome area here. Now you have a number of different things to set up. To get the app working, you're going to need to add all your church tax information. You're going to need to set up two different developer accounts. One with Apple for their Apple App Store. That's where we're in the process of right now. And then we have the Google app, Google developer account set up already. That's a fast approval. The Apple App Store is taking a little while longer for us. Then you're going to set up the App Store information. That's This is going to where, be where you show all of your information to, okay, like, okay, add App Store information. Then you click on that. Do we have an existing app? No. So then we have ARC, ARC Church Hole. Okay, ARC Hole. Then you're going to have a short app title. Then you're going to have your keywords. What are people in your congregation going to search when you're setting up the app? American, Reformed, ARC, Whole, those different things. And you're going to use comma separated. You, you want to separate them out because people are going to be searching for those different things. Then the app description. This will be your short app description, which you want it to be a single sentence. Powerful resources enabling you to connect with your church, right? This app will enable you to connect with American Reformed Church. With this app, you can watch or listen to past messages, stay up to date with, with push notifications, and share your favorite messages via social media or email. So there, you're able to see, okay, what can all this app enable you to do? Then you're going to add in your tax information, and then you're going to add in some branding information. Now, I'm going to skip the tax information just because that's our, our church's um, private information. I think it's private anyway, but anyway, I'm going to skip that one. But then you have your organizational name. This one is the name that you're going to be showing up on your dashboard, showing up everywhere else. And then you have your website URL specifically. Then you want to have your particular logo. Now, there's a number of different sizes that you'll need. I recommend using canva.com to resize your logo to fit in those different areas. You've got one mobile app logo which is the app insignia right that pops up here then you have that one will pop up on your load screen then you're gonna have a lo TV logo which we're working on getting a bigger one right now because this one was is too small of a file but then you'll have that logo pop up on your TV when you pull up the app through your through your smart TV right so now we have a background a certain background color that you can choose you can open up the color picker and choose whatever color you'd like by cycling up and down Choose whatever color is there. That's how you can decide what color you want. Your church brand and brand color and logo. Again, you're going to upload your specific logo here. Now you're going to choose your brand color. So I'm going to put this one back to where it is. And then you're going to choose the default theme. Do you want a dark theme or a light theme? I uh, most people tend to prefer a light theme. I tend to prefer a dark theme, so I'll manually move it over when I have that loaded. Then you can add in your location. So in our case, American Reformed Church, whole Iowa. And then you can add, if you have multiple locations for your church, you can create a new location by adding the location title, information, where service time, so okay, 9.30 is ours, address, phone, website, etc. So then, but for the website, you want to link out to, if you have a particular location page, you want to link out to that specific one. And this, this is contact information for this specific location. That's how you set it up. So then you hit save and you're done. How about that? Now we have our users. So we have our pastor, we have myself, we have our secretary, and then we have our, our remote admin. So then we have, you can see, okay, who who has what privileges? So you've got administrator, you've got administrator, you've got administrator, here you've got billing manager, you've got giving manager, 
it's going to share all those different permissions. Now to add a new user, all you need to do is go to invite user. And then you can say, okay, you're going to put in their first name, put in their last name, put in their email address, and then their phone number. Right? So then you have your app, then you're going to select whatever roles you want them to have. So if you're admin, you can access everything but giving information. If you're a billing manager, you can access payment methods, edit tax info, and receives all invoices and receipts. If you're a giving manager, you can view giving content and take giving related actions. If you're a content manager, you can manage media, you can manage events, you can manage apps, and you can manage the website. Choose which ones will best fit you and you go from there. All right, so then you've got your subscription and you've got import. So import is where you can pull in a lot of your church's data. If you're using a different church directory, often you can export that as a CSV file from that application and then rearrange it into an app, a, a, a way it'll, that you can import it into here. So here it recommends the number of different ways in which you can rearrange your data inside of a CSV file. Now, a CSV file is simply, you can use Google Sheets, you can use Excel, but then when you want, when you go to save it, you're gonna save it as, in Excel, you're gonna save it as a CSV file. And then inside of Google Sheets, you're gonna download as a CSV file, all right? So that's how to do that there. Now, notice how we swapped dashboards when we moved to, or swapped sideboards here when we went over to the import function. This is the back end of people. So we've got people here, we've got a number of different people, all the households in there. And then we've got a number of different potential duplicates that show up like, okay, I'm in there twice, right? So I can pull all that there pull all those out and consolidate them down. So we can merge those ones here. When we merge that, merge those two there. So what we want to do here, use that one. And go merge people. All right. So now we're going to go yes merge. And then that merge has been started. So it's merging all these different contacts into one. 